Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have another design to code for you guys. We're starting a new design today, and it's going to be a pretty cool one. This style I've yet to do on the channel. It's using isometric illustration, and I think it looks pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and head into Bear and start listing some of the things that we're going to need to do in this project. So Bear is a free app that's going to allow us to take some notes and create some lists. So obviously by looking at the design, it's a house related project. So I'm going to title this house project. Under that, I'm first going to create a to do list and we're going to list out the things that we're going to need to accomplish to make this a website. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a wireframe. After that, we can create a style guide and just set the general guidelines that our design needs to follow. Then we can do an illustration. Because we have that kind of website, we are going to have to go into Adobe Illustrator and actually make that. That's going to take a whole video itself because that's going to take a while to do. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a mock-up. And then after we approve our mock-up and we're happy with it, we can turn that into a design by adding actual text instead of lorem ipsum and adding all of our colors and making sure everything is final. Then we're going to take it into brackets and we're going to code it. So now let's say what do we need for this website. So I'm just going to write website and then let's just create a normal list this time. First, we're going to need a landing page. That's what we're going to be creating in this tutorial. If you guys want to make the other pages, I always encourage you guys to make these designs your own. So go ahead and make all the other pages if you want and make this a full on project for yourself. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to need a navigation. So I'm just going to write out nav and then we're going to say with the logo. Then we need a H1 or a heading. So we're going to need a sentence to a paragraph of text just for that. Then below that, we'll probably have a call to action. And that's going to be a button. More than likely, it's going to say something like get started. I also kind of want to have a review section for customer reviews. I'm not sure if I want to include this. So I'm just going to put an asterisk beside this because I'm not 100% on that. And then of course we need our illustration, which I'm not even going to bother writing down because that is our third step up here. So this is what we need to make this landing page because we want this to be nice, simple, and clean. One thing I want to note is on the heading, I want to convey a family value with that heading. So I'm going to write that out next to it just to remember that. So now let's go ahead and our first step is to create a wireframe. So I'm going to head over to Adobe XD. Here in Adobe XD, I just have a 920 by 1080 document open. I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my layout grid and it's going to be a 12 column grid and we're going to start laying this out. So I know I want to have a logo in the navigation, so I'm just going to create a rectangle that's going to symbolize that. And I like to fill mine in with a bluish gray. I just think it looks nice. And then we'll remove the border and then apply 1000 on the radius so it's nice and rounded on both sides. One thing I don't like the more I use Adobe XD is the color of this column. So I'm just going to lower that down to about 10. I don't need to see that much blue. So let's actually darken this. Maybe put a little bit more blue tint, make that a darker gray. Yeah, like that. So that's going to be our logo. And then we're going to use this shape to kind of lay out the rest of the page. So we know we want to have a heading. So to symbolize that, we'll just drag out like so. And to make it look like text, you can kind of scatter it around. Or you can just type out real text. I prefer to do all with shapes. It's just a little bit quicker and I can kind of see it visually a little bit better. Then we can put our call to action here. And I want my buttons to be more square. So I'm going to round that to five and see how it looks. Want to just Increase the height on that maybe a little bit. Okay, and then if we do a review section, we'll have it below the button because our illustration is going to more than likely take up this whole section of the page here. So I'm just going to copy this and then let's just drag this one underneath it. And these need to be very small because they don't need to match the H1. And we'll put that there. Let's also lower the opacity on them. And if we have an author, someone we're quoting, We'll want their name down there. So that's what that will symbolize. So this is how I lay out everything visually. If I don't sketch, which I'm not doing for this project, this is what I like to do. If you prefer to do something else, you can. A lot of people like to sketch and they use 
rectangles and X's and kind of the same process, just looks a little different. That is okay, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, next, let's create our navigations. I'll just copy this shape, make it darker, and then we'll make it a little longer. And then we'll just create a few of them and these are gonna be our different pages. That'll work for now. Make sure they're evenly spaced. And I'll put them over here and then center them up with our logo. And then finally, we need a register or sign in button. We'll put that here in the corner. As you can tell, I kind of have thought this out and I know how I visually want this to look already. And after this process, if I don't like how things are looking, I will go ahead and change it. Most of the time though, I'm pretty happy with something I come up with. And then as I'm mocking it up, I fix it then before I finalize the design. So with this, I think we're good with a wireframe. So I'm gonna double click on the artboard and just name it wire. We can go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to create another artboard in here. Same size, 1920 by 1080. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this style guide. And we can start to pick things like our typography, our colors, we can even create our logo and do all kinds of things here. So let's do that now. So now we're gonna select our type. So I've just created type and then an underline so we can start to categorize these things as we create them. So I'm just gonna type out it doesn't really matter what you type out. It can be a bunch of characters. It could be random words. I'm gonna say this is my heading. That'll work for now. Later, we're gonna change this when we narrow it down to a few fonts. We're gonna change that to something along the lines of our actual heading. That way we can visually see it a little bit better. So Helvetica is something everyone has. This is gonna be one of our options. So I'm gonna copy this and then we'll start looking through our fonts. One of the ones I always use, and a lot of people get on me for using this one quite a bit, is Proxima Nova. I think that one looks good with any design. And then another one is, I think it's Google's, it's Roboto. And I'm gonna go through my font list real quick here, and I'm just gonna see if I have anything else I wanna try out. All right, so here is what I've came up with. This is gonna be my list for the time being. We have first up Helvetica. Then we have Proxima Nova, Roboto, Nimbus, and then the SF Protex, which I believe is Apple's. I think you have to have a license to use this one. If this were a real website, we probably wouldn't use this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rule that one out. Next up on the list is Helvetica. I'm gonna leave that one for now. Proxima Nova I always use, so that one's gone. Same thing with Roboto. So that's leaving me with these two options right here. So we've got Nimbus Sands and Helvetica. I want to see if this one has a lot of, it does not, it has black, and then it has light and regular. So let's put this in black, and what is the thickest this one can go to? Is it bold? Yeah, it looks like it. So I think I want to go for this one. So let's go ahead and delete Helvetica. And I'm just gonna drag this up here. And this is going to be our H1. So out in front of this, I'll say H1. And then we're gonna duplicate that. We'll create an H2. 30, 35 I think is a good size. I'm gonna go with 30. The next one will drop down to 25. We'll leave that bold like that, we'll go down. I don't think we're gonna need an H3, but I'll create one just in case we need one. And let's actually drop this from black to bold, and then we can drop it down to 23 size font. Down here, we're gonna have our P text or our paragraph text. For that, let's try 16. That's a font size I usually like to use, and we'll set that to regular. I also want to have an alternate H1. So for now, I'll just stick that out to the side, and we'll use the light for that. 
So that's always another option. So let's actually just drag these down and stick that one under. And just drag those back up like that. And then we'll put our P text kind of lined up as well. So those are our options that we're going to have to play around with. I'm going to fine tune this in just a second, but for now I think that will work. So I'm going to make a new category. So I'm just going to copy this and we'll just put it around there. And this is going to be for the logo. Now our logo, I want to be made out of type. So I'm just going to copy this text and then uh, let's see, it's home related, so H, I think will work. It's just an abbreviation, it doesn't have to make anything. It's just better than me just saying logo in the top corner. So that will be there. Let's try bold. I like the black almost better. And then let's build a little roof here. Actually, let's just underline it first which I know we have an underline option, but I'm just gonna do it like this for now. And then let's try to do a roof. I guess something like that. And I'm holding shift so that's even, and then we'll just go, where does that line up? Right there. That's close enough. Something like that, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that'll work because this isn't a real logo, it's just kind of something to have in the corner. So that'll be our logo. Then let's create our colors. Let's drag that over. So I'm just gonna use a square I'm going to apply a shadow on this and remove the border. So these are the colors I think I'm going to go with. Off camera, I just played around with this. I like this as a button color, something dark on a lighter background. And if we have an isometric illustration, we're going to be using shades of these colors. I think we're just going to do a one color combination. These are subject to change, but for now, we're going to go with these two colors. So I'll show you guys the color codes on those. That's 3A3076. And then the lighter one is 574996. So I think that's what we're going to use in our isometric illustration as well. So what else do we need? Last thing we need here in the style guide is the buttons. I just want to quickly create those. All they are going to be is some rectangles, but we might as well create them so we have something to go off of. So let's just put BTN. And I'm just gonna grab this actually and just drag it over. And then let's turn on the layout grid. I'm gonna align this to the 12 column grid and make it too wide. And then for the height, we'll go with around 60, 65 maybe. That looks good. And then we can round that five. And so that's very similar to what we have over here. For the text inside of it, let's just put uh, get started. We'll have that in white and we'll put that at 16 size font. And then I'm gonna center this up and then we'll play with the type. So up here we have Nimbus Sans, so we'll copy that. We'll apply that on here and see if that works. Might even bump it up to 20. And then on this, I know we need a shadow since we're going to be using shades of purple. So that will kind of separate it. Let's remove this. So that looks good. So if we look at our wireframe, we have a button here and then a button here. So let's go ahead and make that one. 
So I'll just duplicate this one and then I'll actually make it just a little bit smaller since it's going to be in the nav and I don't want it to be this large. So we'll go with like around there. And I think I want this to say register instead of the general login and sign up. So register. I download an icon just for this button. And we'll put that in there with it. Let's try 10 to 12 spacing in between that. We'll just take those and center them up. Group that and then select all of it and then center them inside the button. And this text has quite a bit of spacing down here, so I'm going to have to manually arrange that so it's centered. And then same thing with this. Just take that down one or two. Looks like I've also managed to rotate this a little bit. So we'll just fix that and then make sure that's still centered and that looks good. So our style sheet's very simple. This is a smaller website project, but we are going to continue this kind of layout for the next design to code videos in the future. So we will need to create more things here in the style guide and we'll need more detailed wireframes. So let's go back to our checklist. So here on our checklist, we've completed our wireframe. We've done our style guide and next up is our illustration. That's going to be in the next video, so make sure you guys are subscribed with those notifications on so you don't miss that video. Also, for even more updates, you can follow me on Twitter at Kaler Edwards. So that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more yard-related content. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.